Shalom, everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh, Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Malaysian time. And uh, praise God, we are up. And uh, we're going to have, once again, a wonderful time in God. Amen. So, welcome, Anya, my daughter. Praise the Lord. So, we're going to, we, we just going to wait a few minutes for all the people to come up. I believe I got a wonderful message from the Lord once again. God is so faithful, I'm telling you. God is so faithful. I mean, that's just that. He is just wonderful. Amen. So, yeah. So, let's see. Uh, God bless you. Uh, welcome, Sarah, also, uh, from Antioch House of Prayer. Member uh, of Antioch House of Prayer. This is our Sunday service. Uh, Linda Munyan, welcome, Linda. Happy Sunday, Papa. Anya, happy Sunday to you too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Uh, yeah, happy Sunday, everybody. They're from Indonesia. Um, Andrew Susan is watching. Welcome. Uh, Abdul jo Jov is watching. Hello, Pastor. Hello, hello. Uh, David Ravi is watching. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Already we have a lo whole lot of people up, up already. Um, this is our uh, Zahid Nadim. Welcome. This is our Sunday service. Um, uh, my church name is Antioch House of Prayer. Uh, we are situated in Cyprus Jaya, um, in uh, Malaysia, about uh, 20, uh, 40 minutes drive from the capital Kuala Lumpur. It's a wonderful city. Um, uh, it sometimes reminds me a lot about Singapore. <laughs> uh, it's very clean and good here. Yeah, amen. Praise God. So the Lord has given the city to us, I believe, and we're going to give the city to him. Amen. He placed us here and we're going to give it to him. So I'm just waiting for my church members to come up. And uh, yeah, praise God, praise God. Um, we're going to have a great time in God. This is my fifth time, I think, five or six times already that I'm alive and all. Andrew Susan, praise God. God bless you. God bless you too. God bless you too. Amen. Praise God. We're just waiting. I usually wait about one or two minutes and then we will be starting with our service. Uh, praise God. Well, God is good. We've had some tremendous feedback with the videos uh, that we have been uh, doing, the, the last six videos, uh, or five videos, I cannot count. My son, Patrick, and lovely, or oh, welcome, amen, to the service. You are part of us, actually. Welcome. Praise God, Patrick. Praise God, lovely. Uh, Dolphin J. Derek Frank, welcome, welcome, uh, praise the Lord, amen. So we just wait for some of the members to come up now, amen, and uh, so we can start this this live broadcast, um, amen. Uh, PV Paul is watching, welcome, welcome, amen, praise God. So let's see, let's see what we are going to do. God is a good God. Amen. So just waiting for some people. I will give another minute or so. Uh, we have been, like I said, we have been doing now five. I, I cannot remember. Five or six. Can somebody help me right there? Five or six live videos already. And um, we've had tremendous feedback. Tremendous feedback. Uh, and uh, and I'm so happy that people took this. And I, I'm so happy to see also that there's so uh, tremendous response to these uh, to these videos. Amen. And uh, praise God for that. And uh, um, people are taking up arms. People are uh, doing their part. The born-again Christians are doing their part. Welcome, Don Potter, a uh, member of Antioch House of Prayers, our Sunday service. Welcome. Uh, like I said, we've had tremendous uh, feedback already. Uh, people have been sending messages to me and all that. And uh, we have been praying together, um, interview uh, with me and all that. And... Um, it's just been snowballing, amen, and people has been responding. People has been responding, and they've taken the new pulpit that God has given them. And uh, welcome, Pastor Ray Yap, and, uh, and welcome, Sandra Nair. So this is, uh, this is just, you know, it's just wonderful to know that uh, these people are, um, you know, responding and taking up this new pulpit that the Lord has given to us, amen, and preaching the word preaching the word from your from your lounge and, and from your bedroom and, and so forth. We can do that. The God has, has actually brought the world to our doorstep. We're all on lockdown. Manda, 
Tambu Bolon, welcome, welcome there, praise God. Mm. A bit of tea. Um, yeah. So, in the meantime, if you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter number 27. Welcome, Jan Globler. Uh, turn to the book of Acts, chapter number 27. Turn to the book of Acts, chapter number 27. And um, we will be reading there from verse number 13 onwards, 14, actually verse number 14. And I'll be reading from the NLT version, the NLT version. Amen, the NLT version. So uh, um, let's go. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter number twenty-seven. Acts twenty-seven, from verse fourteen. But first of all, let's pray. Father, we just thank you, God, that we can come together in this um, uh, today, Lord God. Thank you for the opportunity, my Father, that you've given to us, Lord God. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. This is a service for my for the members of Antioch House of Prayer, but everybody's welcome to watch. And I, I ask God that you'll come now and anoint me, Lord. Give me strength, anoint me, so I can bring this message over in a correct manner. That what is in your heart can also be in the heart of all that is listening to this. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Good. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, so let's read from Acts chapter number 27. Let's read from Acts chapter number 27. Acts, Acts 27 from verse 14, I mean. Let me just get this a bit closer. Let me just get this a bit closer. Uh, it says there, Acts 27 from verse, four, from verse 14, but, uh, weather, but the weather changed abruptly and the wind of typhoon strengthened burst across the island and blew blew us out of the sea. The sailors couldn't turn the ship into the wind, so they gave up and let it run uh, before, the, before the gale. The next day, as gale forced winds continued to batter the ship, the crew began to throwing the cargo overboard. The following day, they even took some of the ship's gear and threw it overboard. Uh, the terrible storm rages for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars until at, uh, until at last, last all hope was gone. No one had eaten for a long time. Finally, Paul called the crew together and said, Men, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete. You would have avoided all this damage and loss. But take courage. None of you will lose your life, even though the ship will go down. For, uh, for last night, an angel of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve, stood beside me and he said, Don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. Watch more. God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. So take courage, for I believe God, uh, I will be judged as he said, but we will be shipwrecked on an island about midnight on the 14th night of the storm, as we've been driven across the Sea of, of Adria. The sailors since land was near. They dropped the weight line and found that the water was 120 feet deep. But um, a, a little later, they measured again and found it was 90 feet deep. At this rate, they were afraid we would soon be driven against the rocks along the shore. So they threw out four anchors from the back of the ship and prayed for daylight. Amen. Um, welcome, Mark Sheen. Uh, welcome, Peter Bredenberg. And uh, all that. Praise the Lord. Okay, now, um, I'm still waiting for some members of mine to come online. Not yet coming up. Now, l let's look at this scripture for a while. And I believe that we will find a, a wonderful message. Welcome, my, my wife, uh, uh, only uh, there all the way from Jakarta. Praise God, my dear wife. Welcome. So uh, this is what we need to have an understanding of. Amen. And, and that is that uh, Paul was in this boat and Paul was saying to the people, do not sail. Do not sail. He said to the captain, better you stay. But they didn't listen and they went sailing. And as they were sailing, we know that the story is saying that a huge typhoon, a storm came up. And when the storm came up, it, 
it rocked and, and you know and it rocked the boat to the left and to the right and uh, they must have had a lot of fear in their heart so what they do is they start to throw overboard anything that is a lot of weight so that this uh, boat can be a little bit uh, lighter so they throw things overboard i mean welcome yuri my son there from um, uh, from makassar uh, and all is actually all, all over the world welcome yuri welcome your family too Amen. So this this is what uh, what my message is. So we see Paul getting onto the boat, but he's before the time he said to the captain, "Don't sail." The captain didn't want to listen, so they sail. But even Paul knew that there's a storm coming. He was still on the boat. He didn't say, "No, you guys go." You, <laughs> I gave you a warning. If you don't want to listen, go, go, go. I am staying here. No, no. Paul got on the boat. And as he got on that boat, they sail with uh, this boat. Amen. So, well, God gave a warning. People didn't listen. So what happened? The sea became very stormy and the waves were big and there was a fire typhoon on the sea. And uh, that means, I mean, uh, you know, th that, that, means just, that means just disaster, in fact. So disaster was coming. And as disaster was coming against this boat, um, they were afraid and, and they and they and they throw the things over and all that. And, and, and after a while, Paul said, it is OK. You should have listened to me, but you didn't. But the Lord appeared to me, an angel of God appeared to me, say everything will everybody will be safe. And uh, the angel appeared to me saying to me that um, you will still appear in the trial uh, in Rome. And uh, well, uh, that means that God is going to take care of him. Amen. So but now we see and this is what I want to get to. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> now we see that in verse number 29, at this rate, they were afraid we would soon be driven against the rocks along the shore. So they threw out four anchors from the back of the ship and prayed for daylight. So they throw out four anchors. My message today to you is God has shown me four anchors that we can maintain and have and know in the time of crisis. In the time that we are going through right now, the world has come to a standstill because of this coronavirus. And uh, we have been addressing this virus violently. And, uh, now, and I believe God is, is busy striking this uh, virus as well. And as a prophet of God, I believe, and I've said that, and I will say it again, by the end of April, things will be subduing uh, quite a bit. Amen. But we've got to listen. Anyhow, so we, we see that four anchors were thrown uh, because they, they were, you know, uh, they were getting close to land. And so they want to make sure the ship is not going to go down. So they throw four anchors. There's four anchors that God has given to me to give to each and every one of you uh, this morning. Um, to just in this crisis that we are in, how we can stand and how we can still be successful. Amen. Are you with me today? And how we can not have fear. Listen to me. There's one thing that is more dangerous than this virus. At this moment in time. And that is fear. Fear has gripped the world. Fear has got a hold and grip the children of God as well. Now, I'm not saying that fear means you've got to stay at home. No, I mean, that we listen to, to our government. Whatever rules they make, we abide to that. Amen. But the problem is we have fear in our heart because we do not know what is going to happen tomorrow. We do not know what if God is in control or not. We, we do not know uh, what God is going to do. Is this the end of the world? Uh, is a lot of problems coming our way? Well, you know, these are the questions that we have been asking all the time. So we do not know. So that's why if we don't know what God is going to do, if we don't know about what the Lord is, what the Lord is about to do, then fear is in our heart. We would rather uh, 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 entertain fear in our heart than to listen to the mighty, Almighty God. Amen. Now, like I said, they throw four anchors. Anchor number one in this crisis is a strong anchor of the presence of God. A strong anchor. Even in the midst of that raging storm, Paul found that he was not alone. Not alone. God was with him. You will find that God is with you. 
right now. Even we are in the storm because this is a storm. Uh, uh, none of us have ever had experience about the virus that is hitting planet Earth and that is globally affecting every person at this moment in time. Either you're affected by this thing or you're affected by fear or you're affected by the unknown what is going to happen. And I'm telling you today right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ that God's presence is with you. Amen. Paul knew it. He knew. Regardless of the storm that tossed the boat and, and, and your life around at this moment in time, we got to have confidence that God is with us. His presence is with us. God says that you will never leave nor forsake you. Amen. This is the first anchor that you and I should know. God's presence is with us. Amen. So that means my God is with me. What shall I be afraid of? Amen. I obey to the rules of the government. I definitely obey to the rules and the regulations and the spiritual rules of God himself. According to the word of God, I do that. So why should I fear? Why? No. People that fear do not know about God. They don't know that they need to hold on to God. Many people out there, listen to me. You know what is the wonderful thing about this broadcast? That I've been having. This is my fifth or sixth one. Sorry, I can't even remember how many times I've been up already. Every second day, God has ordered me to be up and on a Sunday for my church at this moment in time. But let me say it this way. So many responses come even from people that don't believe. And asking me certain questions, amen, and all that. So I'm telling you right now today that God is welcome, uh, uh, Marni, my, my daughter from Bali, and my son, Quentin, and uh, little Faye, my, my granddaughter. Welcome. So let me continue. So they see, we see that, that Paul was, was uh, on this boat. He gave a warning. They didn't listen, but he was still on the boat. He didn't get off. He went with them. We know that the storm strike and uh, the boat came, came, you know, the boat uh, was lost and all that. And uh, what happened? But no one was hurt that they throw down four anchors of life. And we have four anchors in this time of, uh, um, uh, this time of this virus hitting planet Earth. I mean, number one, the strong anchor of the presence of God, the strong anchor of the presence of the Lord. This is incredible that we have to understand that God's mercy and grace is upon our life. Amen. I'm telling you one thing. God will empower you during this time. God will help you during this time. God will be with you during this time. God says, do not be afraid. I am with you. I will never leave and I will never ever forsake you. Amen. Anchor number one, acknowledge and know the presence of the God, presence of God is with you right now. The Lord Jesus, the Christ that lives in you is stronger than the devil that is in the world that's causing this, this virus. Now, this anchor number one. Anchor, anchor, uh, 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 anchor number two uh, is the strong anchor of the promises of God. The promises of God. As Paul weathered that long uh, and the terrible storm, the Lord came to him with a precious promise. Now look at this. He reminded Paul that he would stand before Caesar and that and, uh, in trial, all those uh, on the ship will be spared as well. <laughs> well, I'm you know, this is, I'm sorry, this is a bit uh, funny to me. I, re I respect this, but God said to Paul, Paul, don't worry. You are not going to die now because you're going to stand trial before Caesar. It, you know, I mean, well, this, it's not really something to look forward to, isn't it? But what God is saying to, you, to him, you're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. I mean, God is saying to you and I today, you are going to get through this. There's promises of God upon your life that needs to come to fulfillment. Amen. So you and I are going to get go. We're going to go through this. We are going to go through this. Say amen there. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, God is not going to leave us. I mean, we are going to go through this. Now, Paul is, is just having a word from God was enough for, for him to be sure and be blessed to know that he is going through. Amen. Why? Because Paul had a relationship with God and knew that God was good. God and God is a God that keeps his word and his promises. Amen. So this is number two. God will never leave nor forsake you. Are you with me today? Amen. Come on, say amen. Now, uh, uh, let's get to number three. Anchor number three. The strong anchor of the providence of God, the strong anchor of the providence of God. Amen. 
So Paul is told by the Lord that the storm is part of God working out his plan in Paul's life. Uh, at that moment in time, that storm was the safest place in the world for Paul to be. Why? Because he was in the will of God and God was working a mighty way in a situation to bring about the will of God in Paul's life. Listen to me. I know you're not, the, you're going to say a lot of things now, but I'm telling you, you are now in this virus, in the situation about this coronavirus around the world. You are in the safest place that you can be. In that storm, Paul was in the safest place because he was in the will of God. Amen. Are you in God's will? Are you in God's will? That means you are in the safest place of your life right now. Even you are confined to your house. You're confined to your room. You don't know today I'm going to spend in the lounge. Tomorrow I'll spend in the kitchen. Maybe the next day I'll spend in the toilet. You know, we have these options in our house. <laughs> but never mind. You are safe. Come on, say amen. You are safe. Amen. Isn't God just a good God? Did you know? That God is doing the very same thing in your life as he's doing in the, in the life of Paul even right now. Did you know that? Hmm? That God is doing the same thing? Come on, say amen. God is doing the same thing. God is busy preparing you. Listen to me. Listen to me. You are in a very safe place right now because you are in the will of God. Don't fix your eyes on this coronavirus. Uh, COVID-19. Don't fix your eyes on that. This thing is going to pass. I'm telling you right now. Uh, but fix your eyes upon God, upon the promises of God, upon that you know that God will take you through this situation. Doesn't matter what. You and your family. Amen. And uh, if we stand on this, um, we stand on this, and the promise, I'm telling you one thing today, you're going to go through. We are looking at the four anchors that was thrown uh, uh, of the boat, we have looked at number three now. God is a good God. Amen. Now, let's look at number four quickly. Let's look at number four. There's some other stuff that I also want to uh, 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 bring. Number four, the, the strong anchor of the performance of God. A strong anchor of the performance of God. Hallelujah. Amen. What the, what the Lord told Paul and, and what Paul believed what happened came to pass Everyone made it safely to the shore. Amen. Paul said to them, listen here, yeah, even though you didn't listen to me, and he still went say, but God says uh, that no one is going to die. And God says you'll be safe. And everybody on that boat was safe because Paul was there. Listen to me. God's presence is upon you. God has a promise in your life. And the people that is close to you, the Lord will bring them safe with you. These people were not believers, most of them. I mean, they were sailors and stuff. And, but, but Paul says, you all be safe. All of you will be safe. I'm saying to you as a prophet of God, do these things. You will all be safe. You will all be safe. Come on, say amen. Come on, let me, let me hear. Write down, amen. Write down glory to God, amen. God will keep his word. What is the promise that God has given to you? God will keep his word. God will never leave nor forsake you. He spared every life and, and proved himself to be as good as his word is. That's God. God is able to work it all out for you. Amen. He will get you through the storm and you will land safely. God will get you through this uh, situation about the virus right now. God will get you through. Say amen. God is going to get you through it. Amen. You and your family. This is the good news. That I want to bring to you right now. This is the good news. Amen. It may look this morning perhaps like your boat is going to sink. It may look that the storm is going to be too much and, and you don't know if you're going to prevail. However, when the waves have all settled down, when the winds have ceased their blowing, when the storm clouds have moved off the horizon, you will see that God was in control all along. When this thing is going to stop you and it's going to go, and believe me, it's going to. This is not going to be here forever. Soon it's going to go to. And then you will see God has been in control all along. 
Amen. But you know, the problem is when we are in this situation, when we are in this boat and the storms are hitting to the left and hitting to the right and we don't know what to do and we are afraid and all that, we don't know. And, and But once we get through it, we look back and we say, wow, God was in control. Listen to me right now, my dear brothers and sisters and friends and all that people that is watching right now. Let me say that to you. You are in this boat. Paul was in this boat, according to the book of Acts chapter number 27, from verse 13 to 29. I'm just giving the scripture for people that's coming up now. And according to this, this, this chapter, we see that Paul was, uh, was saying to the, uh, to the captain, don't sail. But the captain sailed. And in the midst of when they were sailing, we, uh, uh, a heavy storm were coming up and the boat was tossed to the left and to the right. And um, and they, all these sailors were afraid and they start to throw out things and they start to make preparation and, and they are very afraid and all that. And Paul says, stop it. I warned you, you should not go. But never mind. You, we are in this situation now. What is wonderful about this, Paul knew this ship is going to sink, but he was still on that boat. And what happened here? Praise God. They throw four anchors and the Holy Spirit told me the four anchors right now. Amen. Are you with me today? It doesn't matter. No storm in your life will be able to blow you off the course that God has for your life. I'm telling you right now. Amen. When you come to the end of yourself and realize that you cannot fix your situation, you cannot calm the sea of your life, you cannot still the wind and that blow against you. When you come to a place of total trust, before the Lord, uh, in your storm, it gets his attention and you can be sure that he will do something about your situation. God is going to do something about your situation right now. Do you think that God doesn't know what's going around? He knows. So why? So we just got to be with him. Sit at his feet. Hold on to his hand. Amen. That's it. That's it. He's going to take you through this. Don't be afraid that you're going to get this virus. Don't be afraid that you're going to die. Don't be afraid that everything, that you're going to lose your business. Don't be afraid of these things. Amen. God is still in control. God knows. But the Lord has, has, has given us a season. And this season is for you and I to preach his gospel. Amen. We have a small window uh, of, of a season that the Lord is bringing the world to us. And that we can bring this gospel. God has closed the doors of the church. Yeah. And he's bringing the world to us. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Amen. So we are all in the storm. God has warned before. God has spoken to prophets. Even to me in January. First of January. He told me about this. I released it in my church. But we didn't listen. We didn't listen. Do you think God is just going to keep quiet? Do you think God. Yes. Last year. The year before. Five years ago. He didn't know that this is going to happen. In the year 2020. He knew very well. And he's warning. Come on, guys. Come on. We didn't listen. We just go on with our little life. Go on with our little life. Go on with our little life. <laughs> well, I'm telling you now, we are in the storm. Together. Just like the book of Acts 27, verse number 13 to 29. Paul says, don't go. Captain says, I am going. They're going. Paul is there. Storm comes. Oh, everybody's afraid. They throw things over Paul said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't worry. No, the Lord already told me no one is going to die. I want to make a bold statement right now. I'm saying that everybody watches this. We are not going to die. We are going to have life and life more abundantly because Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. Amen. John 10, 10, the B part says that. The devil came to destroy and to kill, but Jesus came to give life. Who stands with me and say, I will not die during this, but I will have life. Who stands with me and say, my business will not go down. My ministry will not go down. I will not lose my job. Who is standing with me right now? Let's, let's, let's release our faith in this matter. Let's trust God. Let's believe in God. Come on. Say amen. Right down there. Amen. 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 We got a week by faith. They cast the anchors. 
of his presence. Amen. The strong anchor of his presence. God's presence with you. Anchor number two. An anchor number one. Anchor number two. The, the anchor of the promise of God. God has given you a promise. Anchor, no anchor number three. The strong anchor of the, prov uh, the providence of God. God will never leave nor forsake you. And then fourth, the strong anchor of the performance of God in your life. You are going to see what God's going to do through you during this time. You are going to see how many people you are going to touch. You are going to see how many people is going to come to Christ. You are going to see. Just open your mouth and speak. Just open your mouth. Do something. Don't just sit down. We are in a storm. We cannot hold them to the pole and hope, oh God, please let this thing, let this thing uh, just pass by. Oh God, 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 God. No. We stand up in the midst of the storm. We say, God, where are you? I'm coming in the water. I'm standing in the water right now. I'm walking on the water. I'm, 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 I'm not going to sit down and let this thing uh, destroy me and my family. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm telling you, God is laughing at these enemies. Stand up. I said stand up. The light is within you. You have the anointing that can break every oak. Jesus inside of us, the line of the tribe of Judah, is stronger than the devil, the virus in the world. Stand up. Don't hold on to the pole of, of your ship because there's a storm out there and you're hoping that this thing is going to pass and nothing is going to happen to you. No, don't do that. It's now time to leave that pole and get on the water like Peter did. Get on the water. Jesus is in the storm. Get onto this water. Hey, I'm telling you. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, God. We are not arrogant, but we know who we are in Christ Jesus. Oh, yes, we do know that. We do know that. And therefore, you better know that we know who is in us. You better know this today. Because we, as the army of God, we are marching forward. We are taking back what you are stealing from us. Enough is enough. Listen to me quickly. I'm nearly finished. If you read Psalm 37, an incredible psalm. It's got a lot of promises of God. I, I encourage you to read Psalm 37. Verse number three says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Amen. This is in the midst of storm. Trust in the Lord and do good. God gave me uh, uh, four, four points here from, from uh, Psalm 37. Number two, delight yourself also in the Lord. Delight yourself. The, 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 the joy of the Lord is my strength. I delight myself in God. Commit your way to the Lord. Commit yourself in verse number five. Commit yourself completely to the Lord. Verse number seven, rest in the Lord as well. Knowingly that God is in control. Amen. There's no fear in my heart any longer. I do not fear the enemy. I only have a holy fear for my God. And I love my God with all my heart. And I, I just, I just, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I will just follow him. Wherever he goes, I go. If God goes in the storm, I go in the storm. If God goes in the oasis, I go in the oasis. If God goes in the desert, I go in the desert. Wherever God goes, I go. Because God is in control. God is still in control. This virus is not in control, but God is in control. Say amen. Now, one scripture earlier this morning the Lord gave me is in the Psalm 53 verse 2. Psalm 53 verse 2. He says that God looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand who seeks God. Whew. God is looking down to see if there's any understanding on his people about this. Is there anyone that seeks God? Is there anyone that asks God, what is the answer? Hmm? We as children of God and the church and the body of Christ, we must take the lead in this. Come on. You know, I see a wonderful thing the other day on Facebook uh, in the White House in America, where all these pastors coming together and pray for President Donald Trump. Pray for him. Are we praying for our, our president? Are you praying for your leaders? Are we taking the lead in this? Are we, <coughs> are we making prophetic, prophetic statements? <coughs> are we doing that? Hmm? 
Are we, are we seeking God at this moment in time? What are we doing? Come on. God is in control. God is in control. And God loves you. You are, uh, you are children of the Most High God. Your name is written in the book of the Lamb by the blood of Jesus Christ. You belong to God. God is a jealous God. We have a blood covenant with God. We have a blood covenant with God through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. What belongs to me belongs to God. What belongs to God belongs to me. That's the covenant that we have. It's an everlasting covenant. That covenant can never be broken because it's been, it's been made possible by the blood of Jesus Christ. Are you with me today? Amen. So that means that God will take care of me and that I will seek him. And then when God looks down, he sees somebody that has an understanding. When God looks upon you, do you have an understanding? Are you seeking God? God wants to reveal to you. Are you with me today? God wants to reveal to you many things. Hmm. Glory be to the living God. This is a short message. Let me pray for you. Father, I just pray for everybody now that is uh, looking at this uh, broadcast, Lord God. I pray for their families, Lord God. I pray I make a statement right now that no harm will come upon them. No harm will come upon uh, my family, Lord God. But no harm will come upon, upon uh, their families and everyone, Lord God. And that we'll be safe in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I rebuke the plan of the enemy. I come against every plan of the enemy right now. And in the mighty, mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ, I rebuke you coronavirus i rebuke you right now and we declare right now that the lord is going to strike you down we declare right now we speak death over you every coronavirus that's out there we speak death over you in the mighty name of the lord jesus the christ right now and we declare right now that the presence of the god presence of god will fill the earth the presence of god will fill me lord god and that i will go forth in the spirit and bring and bring and bring salvation and bring deliverance and, and, and bring good hope and good news to the world in Jesus Christ's name. Because Jesus lives in me. I can do nothing out of myself, but only as I hear from him. God is good. Be safe. Listen to this message again. Now, I want to say to you also, please write down your prayer request down there. Every prayer request that you have, write it down there as we are, as we are going to uh, pray for you. Amen. Any prayer, prayer request during this time, write it down. Amen. So we can pray for you. This is my message today. And uh, praise God for that. Amen. God bless you. God loves you. And you are good. Amen. Because of God, that's good inside of you. You are safe. And the Lord's going to keep you safe in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Say amen. Come on. Say amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise to the Lord.